Hey guys, Moxie here from IGN, and today we're going over the Abattoir of Zir. Now, this is going to be a guide for some of Diablo 4's hardest content that we've ever seen. Abattoir of Zir is endgame pinnacle content uh, that players can only access once they've beaten all of the season journey and is incredibly hard. The starting difficulty for the Abattoir of Zir is 20% harder than the highest tier of Nightmare Dungeons. So this content is extremely challenging, and today we're going to be talking about some of the best tips and tricks to conquer the Abattoir of Zir. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So let's start with some basics. If you open up your season tab and then go to your season journey, in order to start this content, all of these seasonal chapters will need to have check marks. You need to complete uh, the last tier. You don't need to complete every single challenge. As you can see, I have seven out of nine objectives complete here, 11 out of 12, 10 out of 11. Uh, you just need to complete enough that you get the chapter rewards. Once you do that, you will be rewarded with the Abattoir of Zir Glyph, known as the Tears of blood. Now, in order to start using this, you're going to need to be leveling it up in the Abattoir of Zir. Now, in order to access this content, you're going to want to come over to Ked Bardu. Ked Bardu is located in the Dry Steps, and once you get here, you're going to want to come over to the uh, Glyph Crafting Occultist. When you come to the Occultist, you're going to look for the Bloodforged Sigils and craft a Tier 1. Now, there are 25 tiers of the Abattoir of Zir, each one increasing in difficulty and the amount of sigil uh, powder that is required to craft it. Uh, you're going to earn them when you complete a tier 1, you unlock the ability to do a tier 2, and so on and so forth. Um, and if you're looking for sigil powder, you get it by breaking down sigils. So if you have a sigil from a Nightmare 100 dungeon or a a uh, Nightmare 20 dungeon, anytime that you break them down, you'll earn yourself Sigil Powder. If you successfully complete Abattoir of Zir, you will earn Sigil Powder. So as long as you're not failing these, you can keep running them. But once you start failing, you can run out of Sigil Powder. The next thing to note before you jump into your first Abattoir of Zir is your defenses. Now, Abattoir of Zir is very different from a Nightmare 100 dungeon or Nightmare dungeons in general because you only have one life. That means if you die at any point, you're kicked out of the run. If you're playing with teammates, if any of your teammates die at any point, all of you are kicked out of the run. And it costs a ton of sigil powder to make another sigil. So going in prepared is very important. Now, what do you need to be prepared? The very first thing is your resistances. Uh, you're going to want all of your resistances to 70% or as close to 70% as possible. As you can see here, I've got 70% for everything except for my fire resistance, which is only 0.7% off. The next thing that you're going to want to look for is armor. Now, the armor cap of Arbitoire of Zir is around 14,000 armor for fighting the hardest enemies. Uh, when you're walking into it, you're going to want around 13.3k armor. Now, the reason you're going to want that much armor is because armor um, affects your physical damage negation, meaning that the more armor that you have, the more damage reduction that you take from enemies. This caps out at 85%, but it changes for the level of enemies. So, for example... Um, I have more than enough armor to fight enemies that are my level at 10,000 armor um, because I'm getting max physical damage negation, which is 85%. However, if I start fighting enemies that are 156 levels um, or level 156, then I'm going to need more armor because their damage is going to go up as their level is going up. Um, and so walking into Avatar of Zir, it's really important to note that you want really high resistances and you're shooting for around, I would say... 10,000 base armor, and then you can use a disobedience aspect to increase your armor even more so that you're taking the least amount of damage possible via your armor. If you're low on your resistances or damage uh, for the Abattoir of Zir, you can come over to the Elixir Crafter and craft some elixirs to increase your defenses, increase your resistances, increase your damage. Uh, you can also craft incenses, uh, which can give you more uh, dodge chance, more thorns, more max life, uh, all of your stats. And you can have both a potion and an in incense active at the same time to increase your rate of success in Avatar of Zir. Uh, there are also hell tides every hour, uh, and opening the hell tide chest can give you potions that can increase your armor, for example, uh, and this is another thing to stack up on before you go into the Abattoir of Zir. 
Now that we've gone over some of the basics, let's walk through an Abattoir of Zir actual run. So this is a tier three that's showing on screen and I'm playing my Shred Druid or a version of my Shred Druid. Um, and one of the big things that you're gonna notice about Abattoir of Zir is enemies are going to be beefy. Uh, in fact, enemies get 20% more HP per level. So their health scales exponentially. The higher you go, the more HP that they get. And if you're playing with team members, they get even more HP. Um, now that we're in an Abattoir of Zir run, you'll also note that there is a time limit. Uh, you have 10 minutes to clear a run. And once you get into the later tiers, that can become a genuine issue. Uh, right now, the big struggle with Abattoir of Zir is having enough survivability so that you don't die in the run, but also having enough damage that you can complete the run in under 10 minutes. Um, and this is kind of a bit of a struggle. Now, this struggle becomes a little bit easier with the new tiers of the Blood Glyph. Once you complete a run, you're going to get experience that you can socket into your tiers of Blood Glyph. Now, for leveling up this glyph, the experience required is massive and only realistically achievable in the Abattoir of Zir. Uh, the reason for this is the Tears of Blood glyph goes up to level 200, whereas all other glyphs in the game only go up to level 21. And normal Nightmare Dungeons just don't reward enough experience to make meaningful level gains on this glyph. Now, as of the hotfix that happened on December 8th, They've massively buffed the amount of experience that you get from completing Abattoir of Zero Runs so that you can actually earn meaningful progression on this thing. Prior to that hotfix, it was basically theoretically impossible to level up this thing to level 200 given the like time frame of the season. So now experience gains are a bit better, but it's still going to be a lot of grinding to really level this thing up. Now, in terms of socketing this glyph, it's really important to socket it in somewhere that's going to give you more survivability for the Abattoir of Zir and hopefully more damage. There's a lot of places and a lot of Paragon boards that you could socket in multiple characters. Um, for example, the reason I've socketed in the Heightened Malice board for the Druid is mainly because it's going to boost up my damage reduction for poison enemies. Damage reduction is super important in the higher tiers, and it's also going to give me increased damage to poisoned enemies. The reason for this is because the Tears of Blood Glyph not only gives me the percent increased in damage, but it also gives me a boost to all of my rare nodes that are in Radius. Rare nodes are these yellow nodes, um, and putting it somewhere smart that, to give you more survivability is really important. For example, if I put it in this board, I would get more core skill damage, which is nice, but I'd also get more resistances. The more resistances don't matter because I'm already capped. Uh, if I put it here, I would get more shape-shifting skill damage and more armor, but the armor doesn't really matter because I'm, once again, already armor capped on this character. Um, and so putting it somewhere that gives you damage reduction, I think is really going to be a great choice for most characters and also giving you more damage, hopefully. Once you complete your first two runs of Abattoir of Zir, you'll have enough experience to level up your Tears of Blood Glyph to level one. Now, socketing this thing can be very important and critical to your success. You're gonna wanna socket in it in a glyph socket that has a ton of core stats nearby, um, as well as beneficial rare notes. The Tears of the Blood Glyph is going to give you, for every five core stats purchased within range, you're going to get 2% increased multiplicative damage and a 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range, bonus increased by 10% every 10 levels. So right now, I've got mine socketed in the Heightened Malice board, and even though that I am a druid, um, even though that like dexterity and intelligence are not my main stat, they're still core stats, so all of these like stat nodes, I'm getting increased damage. And when I have this socket right now, it's giving me 93% increased damage. And I've socketed it in the Heightened Malice board because it's gonna give me 30% more damage to poisoned enemies and 12% more damage reduction from poisoned enemies. Both things that I really need for Abattoir. I need survivability and I need damage. So socketing this uh, in a space where you're gonna get a lot of survivability and a lot of damage is a great idea. That is going to do it for our guide on the Abattoir of Zir. This is hard, challenging, pinnacle endgame content that will push your build to the test. And if you've already gotten a character to max level and done all the content in Diablo 4 and want to try something even harder and push your build to the limit, Abattoir of Zir is the place to do it. Uh, however, this content is brutally crushing. The enemies are incredibly strong. And even on the best builds, you will most likely die. So be careful. And hopefully the tips in this video helped you prepare and get ready to complete your first runs. For all things else Diablo 4, stay tuned here on IGN.